Hello, once again, this is Dr. Phil Fernandez, the president of the Institute of Biblical Defense and the pastor of Trinity Bible Fellowship. And in today's program, I'm just going to be answering a letter that I received from one of my former students, former student named Joe. And uh, he's in college now, he's his uh, Bible teacher in high school. And says, hey, Doc, uh, how have you been doing over the last few months? I hope you're doing well. I have a quick question regarding how to counter an argument stating that the Bible encourages violence. What is the proper response when someone says that the Bible encourages violence, especially in the Old Testament? The background of this question comes from me discussing world religions with my student ministry coordinator. And I commented on how I am not a fan of the Quran's endorsement of violence and his response was how uh, we should, should not fear ideologies we don't understand. And how the Bible encourages violence, violence specifically stating Saul and a part of Maccabees, which he considers a book of the Bible. Thank you for taking time to read this, Doc. Enjoy your week, Joe. So for my former student, Joe, this is, I'm just going to read to you uh, the response that I wrote to him. And I wrote, Joe, it's great to hear from you. My wife and I are doing well. Please pray for us and we will pray for you. I would respond by saying that your ministry coordinator apparently goes to a, a Christian school that's probably a little liberal there. Uh, I would respond by saying that your ministry coordinator should read both the Bible and the Quran in their proper context. The commands of God to the Jews to conquer the promised land were temporary commands unique in Israel's history. The violent, demonic Canaanites needed to be removed from the Promised Land for God to establish his people in the land. On the other hand, Muhammad in the Quran and the Hadith, the authoritative Muslim teachings not found in the Quran, Muhammad in the Quran and the Hadith commands Muslims to slay the infidel wherever they are found, so long as the infidel does not convert to Islam um, or pay the required alms to the Muslim authorities. Surah 9.5 in the Quran is an example of this type of continuing command to slay the infidel. Now don't get me wrong, there are many peaceful Muslims who come to America to look for economic opportunities to improve the standard of living for their families. But the Muslims who literally interpret the Quran are prone to violence since that is what the Quran commands. I would ask your ministry coordinator how many innocent people have been killed by Christians in the 20th century. Not many. I would then ask him to research the number of innocent people killed by Islamic extremists in the 20th century. Islamic terrorism has murdered multitudes in the 20th century, whereas Christianity has been a peaceful religion. Though Maccabees are not part of the Protestant Bible, the Jews were merely revolting against the Syrians who had conquered them and took them over, placing them into bondage. The moral of this story, don't attack people. They might fight back and defend themselves. I think your ministry coordinator appears to be rather naive. The idea that we shouldn't fear ideologies that we don't understand seems to be as gullible as trusting communist revolutionaries merely because you can't understand Karl Marx's philosophy of dialectical materialism. By the way, Marx's philosophy is complex and very hard to understand. The Quran is not. Just count the dead bodies caused by Islamic terrorists. So I don't know what this guy is getting at, uh, that we shouldn't fear an ideology we don't understand. Look, I understand what it means to hijack planes and fly them into buildings and kill innocent human beings. I mean, um, only some gullible American wouldn't understand that. Your ministry coordinator also seems unaware of the fact that other than unborn babies, Christians are most likely, the most likely people on earth to be killed for their beliefs. In Muslim and communist regimes around the globe, Christians are being persecuted, many are being killed. Just because our media doesn't want to talk about it, doesn't mean it isn't happening. God bless you, my friend, Doc. And uh, just as a, a footnote to this as well, uh, 
Just received an email today from the ACLJ, uh, American Center for Law and Justice, from Jay Sekula, and um, it's just basically talking about, well, it says, uh, we're moments from taking key UN United Nations action to defend dying Christians. Christians have been driven to the brink of extinction in Iraq and Syria. Christian children are cut in half, missionaries crucified, women sexually enslaved, ISIS has even used chemical weapons. Worst of all, the United Nations has been doing next to nothing about it. It is a mind-numbing nightmare scenario. Uh, Christians pleading for their lives are saying, no one cares about us like we are not human. A little girl lamented, we cried to the United Nations, but nobody came to help us. Today, the village is surrounded by mass graves. And so, as long as people like Joe's ministry coordinator uh, ignores and excuses all the horrible murders done in the name of Islamic extremism, and then tries to act like Christianity is just as violent or more violent, get your head out of the sand. There are innocent people being killed around this globe, and most of them are Christians. And uh, we got to stand up for Christians. We got to stand for Christian martyrs. We got to stand up for unborn babies. And uh, praise God that there's some peaceful Muslims out there, but uh, apparently they're not reading the Quran or they don't believe it, because the Milan, the the uh, Quran teaches Islam, Islamic extremism. Anytime you get a back to the Quran movement. There's going to be innocent bloodshed. You get a back to the Bible movement, and there's going to be freedom and peace. Thank you, and God bless.